If you've been subscribed to this channel for any length of time, you'll know that my main area of study, focus, and research is in the Gospels. I literally just wrote my master's thesis on the synoptic problem, the relationship between Matthew, Mark, and Luke, explaining their differences, their similarities, and which one was written first. So I really, really like this stuff, and that's also why I like making so many videos about the Chosen on this YouTube channel, because my main passion in life is teaching scripture to others and helping communicate the truth of God's word to others, and what better way to do that? than by taking this show, which is literally adapting stories from scripture and helping explain it to the broader general audience. That makes me really excited for a new gift that is now located in the Chosen Gift Store that they just released, and as soon as I heard about it, I made sure to order it, and it came in the mail today, and I wanted to share this with you so that you could go buy it as well. Right off the bat, I do want to clarify that this video is in no way sponsored by The Chosen. I am simply so excited about this gift item that I wanted to share it with you. And this is the item. The Chosen presents a blended harmony of the Gospels. As you can see, it's a tiny little book. It's not very thick but it is going to be a handy, handy resource for you, not only to aid you in watching the show, but to aid you in your studying of scripture, because what this is right here, it is in itself scripture, albeit nuanced in a slightly different way, and so I'm going to explain to you what exactly this book is, because if you don't know about it, very, very useful stuff inside. In order to understand the purpose of this book, you need to understand something that's called the synoptic problem. Like I just said, this is something I literally just wrote my master's thesis on. It's something I'm super passionate about. But if you've ever studied the four Gospels, you'll notice that Matthew, Mark, and Luke in particular have a lot of really striking similarities, right? John also has some similarities as well, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke in particular are very similar, albeit there are some differences, right? Sometimes they'll differ in regards to certain details that they share. They'll differ in regard to their specificity. They'll differ in regards to the order that they're listed out. And we have to realize that all four Gospels aren't necessarily focused on telling the life of Christ in a strictly chronological manner, which is kind of how we are used to reading stories nowadays, right? And so we just have to understand that back in the first century, the reason for writing books and the purpose behind books and the structure of books was a little bit different than we typically expect a modern day audience. So when you read the Gospels, you might be kind of confused as to why things are so similar and why things are so different, and you might find yourself getting confused a little bit about the story of Jesus Christ and what exactly is going on there, and this is something that you're not alone in because ever since these Gospels were written, Christian scholars and Christian thinkers and Christian believers in general have been wrestling through this issue, trying to figure out how do Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John relate to one another, and what is the singular story of the life of Christ? What has resulted from this is that a lot of people create things known as gospel harmonies. If you've been watching this channel long enough, you'll know that I myself have created a gospel harmony where I have taken the text of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I've tried to harmonize them together where you have all of the text side by side in a strictly chronological order. Obviously, everybody's gospel harmony is going to be a little bit different, so mine is different from anybody else's because you might disagree on certain chronological aspects because the gospels don't necessarily give us every single little detail that tells us the chronological order of things. If you've been on this YouTube channel, you've seen it plenty of times because I often will pull up my gospel harmony to just talk about the things that The Chosen has adapted to the screen so far, but then you can take it a step further. And in addition to just making a gospel harmony, what you can do is you can actually make a blended gospel harmony where you take the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you actually blend them together into a cohesive narrative. So in places where John says something that none of the other gospels say, you leave it as it is. But if Matthew, Mark, and Luke all share one single story with just little different details, you blend them together into one cohesive narrative unit, and basically you've combined all four gospel accounts into one singular account. Obviously, this does change things a little bit, and people are going to be a bit apprehensive in regards to this, because this is a human effort, and it kind of changes the word of God to make something, make it something a little bit less, right? Because each of the gospel writers had purposes behind each of their individual gospels, and we have to acknowledge that. But... The benefit of this is that it actually helps you understand a strictly chronological order for the life of Christ as best that we can discern from the internal evidence of the Gospels. This is actually something that I myself have been working on for the last few years, if you could believe it or not. I have been working through my Gospel Harmony uh, just on my own, and I have been marking it up, and I have been talking, like, I've just been highlighting things where it's like, okay, Matthew and Luke are similar here, Mark and Luke are similar here, Matthew and Mark are similar here, Matthew and John are similar 
similar here. And I've been marking this all up because in the long run, I want to create something just like the thing that The Chosen has released for you right now. You can go on their gift store and you can purchase this. So let me explain what you actually see in here. This was created by Dallas Jenkins and Amanda Jenkins, right? So these are the creators of the show, but primarily the work has been done by Steve Lobb, who, if you're familiar with the Christian publishing industry, is a really big and popular name in that industry. So they got together and what they've done is they have compiled the gospel narrative into a single unit uh, to where it is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John blended together. And if you're kind of wanting to know uh, what this kind of looks like, let me just open up to one page and read you an excerpt from it so that you get an idea of how this works out. So it says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is day one, right? The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Many have undertaken to compile a narrative about the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as the original eyewitness and servants of the word handed them down to us. So it also seemed good to me, since I have carefully investigated everything from the very first, to write to you in an orderly sequence, most honorable Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things about which you have been instructed. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I'm going to stop right there because... If you've studied the Gospels, you'll probably see what just happened. The very first sentence was taken from the Gospel of Mark, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That is the first, that is Mark chapter 1, verse 1. But then, going into the next part, it starts with Luke chapter 1. Many have undertaken to compile a narrative about the events that have been fulfilled among us, right? And then it goes through a few verses through Luke, and then at the end of Luke's intro, it suddenly goes into the intro of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? And then it goes through John's entire prologue, and then if you keep flipping on, at the end of John's prologue, it goes to an account of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, son of Abraham, right? And that is the intro to the Gospel of Matthew. Just right there, you see how they're taking Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're taking the respective intros, and they're melding them together and blending them together in a way that is cohesive, right? So that they're trying to make it to where it's not too choppy, because there, there are ways to do that, to where it just feels like kind of out of place. But instead, they said, okay, well, the Gospel of Mark starts with this blanket statement about the beginning of the ge genealogy of Jesus Christ. The Gospel of Luke starts off with his dedication to this other guy uh, named Theophilus, and so you can actually blend those together in a fairly natural way so it reads like one cohesive unit. The Gospel of John goes way back to the beginning of creation, but the way that he starts his Gospel account off naturally could flow directly out of that little introduction, but then once you get to the end of his prologue, you need to start introducing the life of Jesus, so you start with Matthew's genealogy. And so you see how they've taken each of the gospel accounts and they've blended them together in such a way so that it makes one cohesive narrative unit. And what they've done is that they have created, as you can see on here, they've create, they've left the uh, headings on there just to separate the different stories. But what they've done is they've broken all of the, the big account into 40 different days so that you could use this as a 40 day devotional as well, reading through all four of the gospels. So that's also really cool. So rather than just making it one long blended gospel, harmony, they've split it up in 40 days so that you can meditate on it and read through it over the course of 40 days, which is really useful. Then going to the end, I just want to just give you, I just want to point out all the different resources they have here. They also have at the very end, a scripture index where it breaks down by each day, each of the original gospel references that were included on that day. So if you go to day one, which is the thing I just read from, you have Mark chapter one, Luke chapter one, verses one through four, and John chapter one, verses one through 18. And that was the part I was reading from. And then immediately after that, you get the genealogy, Matthew chapter one, verses one through 17. Then you have the genealogy from Jesus to Adam, which is from the gospel of Luke, which they've also included in here. Luke chapter three, verses 23 through 38. Then they go to the birth of John the Baptist foretold and the birth of Jesus revealed to Mary, right? That's all in day one. Then you go to day two, it's got Mary visiting Elizabeth, right? And so it just goes through all of this and it's blending them all together in, into a nice cohesive unit while also remaining the word of God because they're not adding anything into it. All they're doing is they're taking the accounts we have and blending them together. Once again, this does not substitute regular Bible reading because each of the four gospel authors have their purposes for writing the gospels the way they did. And so if you only study this, you're going to miss out on a whole lot of the nuances that Matthew's introducing into his gospel and Mark's introducing into his gospel and Luke's introducing into his and John into his. 
But the writers aren't trying to give you something to substitute scripture. Instead, they're trying to give you a handy resource to help advance your study of scripture. And I think that this does a really, really good job at that. It's the Christian Standard Bible Translation. I forgot to mention that. This is the CSB. Uh, and so it's that that's translation. If you, uh, I haven't really done a lot with the CSB, but I will now, now that I've got this. But the one thing that I wanted to highlight is that they, that they also show the resources here uh, for what other harmonies of the gospels that they used in order to help develop their own. Because like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, everybody's going to have different so sorts of gospel harmonies and nobody's going to fully agree on the chronology of the life of Christ. My chronology is different than this chronology, most likely. I haven't compared it exhaustively. Uh, it'd be kind of crazy if we happened to land in the same place. But everybody's harmony is different. But what they've done is they have used really handy gospel harmonies. I mean, I'm familiar with some of these. Uh, there's the Harmony of the Four Gospels by Orville Daniel. Uh, you've got the Simplified Harmony of the Gospels by George Knight. You've got a Harmony of the Words of the Works of Jesus Christ by Dwight J. Pentecost. He was actually passed away now, but he was actually a professor at Dallas Theological Seminary, uh, which is a seminary that I went to, and he actually was one of my professors, even though he'd already passed away. Uh, it was actually kind of cool. I took a class about the Gospels from him, well, it was actually about the life of Christ. Uh, and it was recorded sessions and then somebody else provided over the class, but that's actually kind of cool. So I'm familiar with Dwight J. Pentecost, uh, and I've got that exact book and it's a very handy resource that I've been using and making my own gospel harmony. Uh, and so what I wanted to point out is that if you're skeptical of this thing, they've got the resources in the back so you can go check the legitimacy of those sources in order to determine whether or not you think that this is trustworthy. Uh, and they've got a whole bunch. Then they've got chronological Bibles so that if you're wanting to go deeper into studying the Bible like this, you can go do that. They list the Chronological Life Application Study Bible, Chronological Study Bible, New King James Version, uh, Reading God's Story, the Daily Bible, stuff like that. They've also got other blended gospel harmonies. Uh, there's Lorraine Botner's Harmony of the Gospels. You've got The Greatest Story, a unique blending of the four gospels by Johnston Cheney and Ellison Stanley. You got the four in one gospel of Jesus Christ chronologically integrated according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John by Nikola Dimitrov. And you've got all these different things, which is just, it just makes this a very handy and useful resource for you. And so I just wanted to talk about this book very briefly because I wanted you to go buy this because as you can see, I buy their other stuff as well. I've got their shirt on right now. I've got other shirts going, sitting in my closet right over there and some of them laying on my bed right here. <laughs> But this right here is without a doubt the best resource I think that they have come out with. And so you need to go buy it because this will help you not only in your understanding of the chosen, but it will help you understanding of the Bible and specifically in your understanding of the life of Christ. So be sure to go get this because it is such a valuable resource. Uh, and I just think that it's so cool. And also, I didn't even mention this. Look at how aesthetically pleasing this is. It is so nice. It's like this sleek black, like a faux leather cover. I'm assuming it's faux leather. Uh, and then it's like, and it's, um, it's just really well done. Uh, it's, it's very nice. It's got like this little slip thing that you can come on off. Uh, very, very good. Um, but even beyond the aesthetics of it, go get this. It's a very handy resource. I'm so grateful for the people at The Chosen for doing this because they're not satisfied with just giving you an entertaining show they want you to grow in your relationship with God, right? That is the goal. And so they're giving you resources to do it. Take advantage of those resources. Go buy these, buy them for your friends. Christmas is coming up. Get them for loved ones because guess what? Maybe they don't watch the show, but guess what? You can get them to study scripture. And that is a super amazing thing. Go do this. It's an amazing resource. That's all I've got to say for you today. I know this was a bit of a different video, but I just wanted to talk about this because it's a really, really, really cool resource that I think you should take advantage of. My name is David Tate. This is Now Let's Be Honest. Be sure to keep a smile on your face and don't let anybody steal your joy. I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye. You read a verse, you sing a hymn, the money's in the plate. Sundays you mark out for him, but even then you show up late. You bought the shirt, you wear the cross, but sin throughout the week. Thirty shekels and a noose, you kiss him on the cheek.